we're, we're off and running. But, but I, and the first thing I want to say is just the most massive thank you. I mean, you cannot imagine, you cannot imagine the impact your book has had on our business, really. Uh, I mean, we were casting around for, right, how are we going to be more deliberate in innovation? And the, the biggest single thing we've done was to buy your book. Record, I just, I've, I've got a recording <laughs> of this now. I'm just going to play this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should feel, I hope, a warm glow because I think at this point we've run somewhere between 80 and 100 sprints. That's amazing. That's, yeah. a, that's a lot. I that mean, is a you, lot. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, um, what have you learned? I mean, are there things that you've found, you, you know, work especially well or don't for you about the process? Um, I suppose... Uh, the first thing is the diversity of the people that you have in the in the room is yeah. incredibly important, and we mean that diversity in terms of expertise, background, yeah. can be income, age, gender, race, all of that. We find our best ideas come when we have our most diverse audiences, and 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 make sure you have a good facilitator. I guess the other thing we've learned along the way is spend a lot of time defining the question that you're trying to answer. Do you, need... do you find that that um, definition can happen within the sprint or does it need to happen before? We usually work on it beforehand. We put down, this is the, 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 the problem that we're trying to solve. And then there's a, and then there's a kick about between the sprint leads. So we assign joint sprint leads. It would be, and you want it, it to be broad enough, but not so broad that you, yeah. You, you, yeah. Like, is it, a, is it a script for the conversation that happens with those folks? Or is it a, you just know that if you meet, uh, that by this time you have the expertise? Um, yeah. I think we, we know intuitively now, oh, that's too, that's too broad. That's too big, yeah. 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 And, um, and one of the rules we do break a little bit um, is, so in your book, if I remember rightly, you sort of talk about the size of the sprint team, it would be about 10 or 15 people. And um, in, our, in our festivals, we've gone for 50 to 60 People. Just so you know how how uh, uh, far you're breaking the rules, I actually say five to seven. Oh, so yeah, you're right. at <laughs> ten times as many, uh, which is uh, really impressive, actually. I mean, yeah, right. the reason, the only reason why I say to cap it is it's hard. It gets very difficult. Fifty. I mean, what are you doing? What does that? What's that look like? Yeah. So I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. So we we look. We asked ourselves a question: How can we how can we optimize the use of the mobile workforce? Right. So one thousand of our workers, they're out in vans every day. It's yeah. it's mathematically the most complex thing we do is to schedule their work. There's an awful lot that goes into that uh, if you think about it. So there's the the scheduling, the algorithm. That bit is is reasonably obvious, and there are algorithms in the market. But then the kit that you carry in the van, that's another component of it the well-being of the van worker and trying to predict where incidents are likely to occur because of you know weather and known hot spots and things like that that can be not so when we tackled that sprint we we we, we, we keep it as an organic process but we write that problem expecting that it will subdivide okay okay you'll break people into different pieces yeah and, say, and right, so they then of- Five yeah, is going to tackle this part. That's exactly. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, so then by the end, you have the teams. whole thing covered. You yeah. haven't just focused on one moment. You've been able to define. Uh, interesting. What I wanted to do was to, to to take you back. So take you right back to your first sprint experience, and 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 if you remember what that was like. Yeah. This idea of focusing for one week on one problem and trying to produce a prototype. You know, I had done that a few times. You know, we were, I talk about this project that became Google Meet. And yes. uh, of course, we're on Zoom now. So uh, yeah. you can see how well that turned out. But, uh, <laughs> but, but that project at the beginning, you know, it was, it was a project had been limping along for a long time. And we said, you know, look, let's just build a prototype this week. Let's and stop trying to make it perfect. Let's just build yep. something people can use. And uh, there's that experience. There's another experience on when I was working on Gmail and I was working with an excellent engineer. And uh, she said, I'll just give you four weeks and then I'm going to go on to something else. So, you know, we talked and we decided we're going to spend each week, we're going to do four times. uh, We're going to spend a week, make a prototype. Those two things happened in the same, you know, few months actually in 2000 and uh, I think 2009. And then it was like the, that project took off and, and the 
Google Meet project took off and I'm working on those things for like a year and a half. And finally, a year and a half later, I'm realizing how, like I look back and I'm like, gosh, that was really great. Those little, yeah. those little short bursts were so effective. And I was thinking about all the time in between, you know, after that and how, when you go back to business as usual, how ineffective it can be. And I just thought, man, that is that is magic. And I need to try to recapture that magic in some way. Right. So the first design sprint, the thing I called a design sprint, I said, look, I'm going to try to like manufacture that magic was the, the process to get there, you know, cause I didn't have a process yet. I didn't have a recipe to work from. So I took sort of a, a brainstorm workshop in the beginning and I had like about 30 people on the first day. And then we narrowed down and had a team of uh, maybe five or six for the rest of the week. We just sort of locked ourselves in a room and came up with, with these competing designs for what to do with those ideas. And we're going to define a problem on the first day. And by the end of the week, we're going to have a prototype or we're going to have competing solutions and they're, and we're going to give people a lot of time to work on their own. And so it worked, uh, there, I, I learned over the years, many, many ways to make it better, but that first one worked, but it was nerve wracking going into it because I had only experienced it, that magic happening kind of by circumstance. Yes. And so to, to go in and try to say, I'm going to, uh, you know, get all these people to, to, go through the motions that I'm asking them to go through. And I think at the end of that rainbow, there's going to be a pot of gold. And I didn't know. And I knew a lot of people would be sort of looking at me. And yeah, know, I, what did you do with our week? You know, because it's a big, it's a big request. <laughs> it's not and the easy. first time we had like a thousand people involved in the festival, right? And six sprints running and, oh and, and, gosh, a, and a couple I mean, of data hacks. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, I spent the whole week pacing up and down a bit like a, a, an expectant father. Yeah, I can't yeah, imagine then, starting off doing it with a thousand people. How the festival came out was, was my boss said, you're not noisy enough. You know, the design <laughs> sprints are great and the data hacks are great, but uh, you're not doing anything to change the perception of the region. Um, you're not doing anything to change the perception of the industry. So you need to, you know, you know, really need to get a lot louder about this stuff. And, and, and I, I'm, one of the things that the, the, the UK is really good at is summer festivals, right? I mean, you, you perhaps yeah. heard, right? We have a reputation sure. for these yeah. things. So it, it's like, can we bring that um, with design thinking and data hacks and mash them together? And, and, and if we do, what's that environment like? Is it inspiring? Is it creative? Do the two things have synergy? And, and the other thing about a festival, I think it democratizes innovation, right? We don't care which organization you're from or what pay grade you're on. Yeah, yeah. With t-shirt yeah. and shorts and, and everybody's on the same team. It's a huge deal because you mm. you do not know in, in any organization, it's very hard to know where the information you're going to need resides, like in yes. whose head it resides. And, and also who's going to synthesize the information that we share in just the right way that produces a solution. But you, you actually can't predict who the person is going to be. It's super interesting what comes out and what ends up being the, the key. So yeah. that's cool. That's, that's really cool. Well, so again, and we, we, you know, we adhere quite strictly to the you ship something, right? And, yeah. and we try and sell that at the end. But in terms of selling the idea at the end, what, any, any, any tips for, for people? Selling the, the solution that you come yeah. up with? Yeah. I, I found it's very important to tell the story of the the sprint along with talking about the solution that right. came to. So the story of the creation of the idea. And I like to tell that story and it's a mystery. And every sprint, when you retell it, it's the same basic story structure, which is that we we have we have this problem and we we set out on a on a sort of a quest to answer this this question and, and you you sort of tease that question throughout the whole time you're telling the story. And even, you know, you're telling the story later to people inside the company and they see that it didn't just come out of nowhere. I think right. that it's, it's natural for us as humans to want to know the story. What is yes. the story behind this? And I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty good storyline that helps people see when you then show them what you built, how you got there. And, and you can also talk about the flaws. And uh, I think that's compelling too. You know, I think there's a real honesty 
to the story of the design sprint and a very universal appeal of like a team of people trying to solve a problem that's kind of cool. And if you share that with people, I think it goes a long way to helping them feel invested and involved and, and like it's something they can support. Uh, you've been so generous with your time. I could talk to you all day. I want to ask you just one, one, <laughs> sure, one last okay. question though, because we're doing this this time and really for the first time in a virtual environment, right? So yeah. not in the room, not with the buzz of the festival and all of the stuff that's kind of going on around it. So have you, you've done a few online sprints, I, I understand. So yeah. what, have, what have you observed as sort of the key differences and how do you make that work? One of the key differences is uh, already a design sprint is tiring. Just yes. to be honest, like it's it's, yeah, oh yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. 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 And it's actually, it's harder uh, over video. There's a lot of good things about being in the room with people, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. We're, we're, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, Social yeah. animals, we like that. Yes. And I could get a little bit of that over video, but not nearly as much. And it's, it's exhausting. And you cannot expect people to, to spend as much time as they do in, uh, in a real, you know, we're all together in the same room. One of the things that's really important is to keep the hours where people are on video shorter. Yep. And to do that, you have to do some tasks offline. And, okay. which can actually be healthy. I mean, I, there's some advantages too to the sprint. So one of the tools I really like for sprints on, on, on screen too is, uh, is to use paper. Um, have people use paper and pen as much as they can and give them the chance to be away from the screen and, and think about problems. One of the things that I've found just recently actually in running these online that's really helpful is to have uh, a dance break. So every so often <laughs> I will have a little slide in my deck that's, you can't tell if, if you, you know, until it, it comes there and I, and I do sort of a reveal and it's like, oh, 60 second dance break. And I have a little playlist of dance songs and I just play the dance song. And then like everybody dances for 60 seconds. And, uh, but you just have to get up and not just stretch, but like actually, you know, you have to like, you gotta, you gotta dance. And yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell people, you know, like, oh, just dance with your elbows, you know, dance with your hands, dance with your hands, move with jumping jacks, you know, and then like come back in 60 seconds later. And it's funny because you hope that the design sprint, people are going to say, that was so smart. That was so, we, we accomplished so much. And usually the first thing people will say they liked was the dance break. The dance so. break. And that really fits with the festival. So I think that's a brilliant, yeah. <laughs> that's a, a, a totally brilliant tip. Jake, thank you so much for your time. And, and you know, some point, Maybe next year we'll get you yeah. over for the festival. Oh, yeah. We'd love you to experience the. You know, I want to be our there. And then we'd, we, I'm, I'm sure you would just, you'd die with pride. I hope not die. <laughs> I don't want you to die, of course. But I uh, yeah, think you would well, feel. I'm already very, I'm proud, very so. full of pride hearing about yes. what you've. You what should you've be, done. sir. Your, your and with, and was with, immense, you know, yeah. And with uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of gratitude, thank you mm. so much for taking that idea. It's you know, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of work on your part to turn a bunch of dead words on paper into something that's got so many people involved in it. And uh, and so I just I just want to thank you for oh, all no, your work uh, making this happen. No, I mean, it's such a practical Super book; cool. he's so easy to pick up and do something with. So yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you. I, I look right. forward to meeting you in person, but thank yeah, you for taking likewise. the time to, to meet me over video. Delightful to meet you on Zoom anyway. <laughs>